Now, let us turn to 1 Corinthians 4 chapter. Here, the chapter begins with a declaration. of our accountability. Let a man so account of us, you know, that we are to be known as the ministers of Christ, the servants of Christ, and stewards of the mysteries of God. Well, that's a very high-ranking position, you know. Uh, I would like to lay claim to it, really. <laughs> Here we're told, stewards of the mysteries of God. I wish I would know a fraction of these glorious mysteries of his unsearchable riches. You know, people talk of the unsearchable riches and are all the time very conscious of their poverty and the thinness of their wallet. You see? And then they declare unsearchable riches. Now, there should be no place for that kind of hypocrisy. That is hypocrisy of the worst order. You know, and we make ourselves, moreover, the laughing stock of any sensible person. You see? They can see, hey, what are you talking about? And then, I see you all the time very conscious that you don't draw a big paycheck and uh, you're always feeling the pinch of all the new bills that are cropping up all the time with every change of government and so on and so forth. Well, you know, folks, we have got to be real when it comes to the Word of God. I say I have to be real, otherwise I am a hypocrite, plain and simple. When I see 20, you know, I had to buy a paper this afternoon. I had to pull out of my wallet and see what's there. And there was a 20 pound note. I, did I doubt the figure on the note? Or did I fear whether it is legal tender? Or whether I'll get my full value for that 20? No, no such thought ever crossed my mind. But when it comes to God's word, it's not legal tender, you know. It's somewhere up in the sky. Not for our daily use. Well, that holds no water to me. And then in that case, the God whom you worship is a God who is totally untrustworthy and does not go by his own word. And he can print currency that are totally worthless. You know, we have got to get real when it comes to the Word of God. And when the Word of God warns us, we have to take it rather seriously. And here we see in the second verse, Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. But for me, 
It is a very small thing that I should be judged of you or of any man's judgment. You know, folks, it is true that we're all given to judging people. And, uh, you know, a fashion designer knows that it is the man behind the clothes that really matters. But he says, the cliché, however, is there, clothes, clothes make a man. Would you want to go by that all the time? Clothes make a man. That's the cliché. But any clothier knows he can clothe a man as well as he possibly can. But there's something in some of his customers that's very disappointing. If the man has a heart, he can see it. I clothe my, I clothe my customers with the finest material, the finest in the cut, but something is wanting. They are okay before the mirror but they are no good in life. You see, folks? And however, we are given to judging people quite quickly, isn't it? We judge by the looks, we judge by the reputation, we judge by hearsay. It's terrible. Though we don't judge ourselves half so seriously. But when it comes to judging anybody else, fine, you know, dismiss the person. He is worth nothing. Well, here, St. Paul says, I don't care for anybody's judgment. Let him keep his judgment to himself. Fourth verse, for I know nothing by myself. Yet am I not hereby justified. But he that judgeth me is the Lord. You know, we don't wait for the Lord's judgment. We don't wait. We, we are far too hasty. And the Lord tells us, judge not, that you be not judged. For by the same measure that you judge others, you will be judged. A judge said to me, you know I have sentenced men to death, to hang in the gallows. But I myself he would introduce himself after conversion on some of my platforms. He would introduce himself saying, I stand here not as the principal judge of the city or whatever, but as a principal sinner. See, we don't, we don't judge ourselves as principal sinners. St. Paul calls himself the chief of sinners. Concerning the law, I am blameless. That means he did not do many of those things which we have done, breaking the laws of God. But, this is a faithful saying that Christ Jesus came into this world 
to save sinners of whom I am chief. You see, that consciousness makes us very chary, very careful about running down others. But some people have made it a mental habit of being negative. You can never help such people, let me tell you. If you are given to that attitude of mind, and it's a chronic thing with you, to just to be negative, when you approach someone or evaluate someone whom you don't have to, you're not called to. Judge no one before the time, says the Bible. You're not called to do that. You're not authorized to do that. But it is so dreadful. You see people stuck in this matter. You can write them off. That's it. Their life is gone. They don't attend to their own hearts. You know what God taught me? To attend to my own heart. And I see it to be bad enough. To deserve all my attention. So I don't go around, you know, condemning all people here, there, everywhere. I say, why are these people in this condition? It's my responsibility to lift them, and I have not done so. I am guilty because I have far more knowledge than they do. My fault is much greater than any of theirs. That's how I look at it. I've always looked at it that way. But here we are told, fifth verse, Therefore judge nothing before the time until the Lord come, who both will bring to light the hidden things of darkness and will make manifest the counsels of the hearts. Then shall every man have praise of God. I am amazed at the conclusion of this statement. Then shall every man have Praise of God. Now, what kind of men is this referring to? Do you fit the bill here? What kind of man is this? When the counsels of the heart are manifest, and every hidden thing brought into the light. Will you have praise of God? Hey boy, I saw you over there in that dark corner. And I saw all that you did and all that you said. And in that dark corner, you pleased my heart. Will God say that to you of the dark corners in your heart? You know, there are so many people who will tell you, please don't tell this to my husband. Please don't tell this to my wife. 
or to somebody. I say Jesus Christ said, there is nothing hidden which shall not be revealed. What you hear in secret, then declare upon the housetops, because you're not really doing something which is not warranted. It's going to be done. It's, there is nothing hid. And now, folks, we'll, we'll come to that a little later. One of the first things that does happen when there is guilt, when we come short of God's glory, we like to just sweep it under the rug, put it away where nobody sees. And it's amazing. How many people imagine that they are going to get away with it? You know, rob a bank and run away, or, you know, so many, and they feel they are going to get away with it. They are not. For, here we are told, when the Lord will bring to light the hidden things of darkness and will make manifest the counsels of the hearts. Now I begin to wonder, with all this increase in magic and the tremendous Philip which Potter's books have given to magic the terrific boost. And they are coming out of the woodwork, you know, everywhere. And uh, I really wonder if there is also can cannibalism in the country. You know? Drinking the blood of babies is one of the rites. In uh, the practice of black magic and so on, and Satanism, this is well known as a sheriff, uh, as a police officer, close to Washington, D.C., said to me, there was a ritual murder just here. Yes, I believe there would be in this country the extraction of certain vital organs which are sacrificed on the altar of Satan. I wonder if people would be safe today in some of those lonely places in this country. That is just a normal harbinger or something which follows magic. I sometimes ask people, you know, when I encounter these men, have you practiced certain meditations in cemeteries and cremation grounds? You know, before the crematorium, which is an enclosed building, it was open, you see. In many religions, it's open. Burning of the body. 
and uh, I have asked people. I have asked Hindu priest. I asked a Hindu priest. Hey, how come you have become one obsessed with the desire to commit suicide? Have you indulged in these things? He said, yes, all of us do. How come you became a drug addict? Oh, all of us are drug addicts. All of us are into drugs. So a national tragedy is being celebrated today as a glorious literary coup. that only shows the degradation of Britain's tastes and, in fact, the world's. And the danger to which little children are thus being exposed. I know the inside story of these things. And look out for what is going to follow. But God says, who both will bring to light the hidden things of darkness and will make manifest the counsels of the hearts. Now we've got to be very careful of the lines in which we begin to think. What are our preoccupations? Especially, what are we mulling over in our minds? The counsels of the heart. They are very serious business, let me tell you, my beloved people. The Lord is going to declare and bring to light. He will make manifest. If you turn to Hebrews 4 and verse 13, neither is any creature that is not manifest in his sight, but all things are naked and opened unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do. Everything is naked and opened unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do. Let us pray. O oh, loving Father, hear our prayer. Make us real, we beseech you. Our homes should be places of great transparency. And our hearts, that God may be pleased that the Lord Jesus might dwell with us. Let us not make it our business to drive away the Holy Spirit. Oh, my Father, draw near to us and let us be a people who will not Fiddle around when Britain burns, when Britain is burning. Save us from all this heartless fiddling. 
that we might give ourselves wholly to pleasing you, talking those things that please you, seeking your will, and being a river, a flow of righteousness. So help us, Lord, we pray. In Jesus' holy name, amen. I don't see